Hey, Captain the Nettie Castle in here in the shop. In episode 68, on the one way, we did some eccentric, concentric turnings. This little fob is what we did. And showed you how to do the spring and everything else. But it's not really a spring, it's just called wire. But show you how to do it all on a traditional lathe. In this episode, number 69, I'm going to show you how to do almost the exact same thing a little more exact, exactly, okay, out of same products, including Corian, on an ornamental lathe, my lathe Zella. And if you have an ornamental, you can do it on yours too. So if you want to see how that's done, watch. I guess I better start at the beginning. This is a port -a cable laminate trimmer. Now, the next version will have a Harbor Freight laminate trim because I found one that will mount up a little bit easier. But I built the bracket that would hold the Harbor Freight or a port -a cable router trimmer. The hard part was getting it the right height this way. But it works on the slide bed. I've got it squared to the bed so that the penetration or the, this up screw type cutter and that's one of these plunge cutters that pull the, the remnants out is spinning at 31,000 RPMs and that's going to do my cutting for me. Now with this move what I have the other side of this disc looks like this. I have done the concentric rings. I did this on Lazilla using this twisted bit. Then I applied a piece of double stick duct tape. Yeah, that's right. Sold at Lowe's. Double stick duct tape on the back of it. I put it on this face plate and pushed it in. It's lying to the center of the face plate. I did this on the small lathe. Then I chucked it up. It's in my towel on chuck. The towel on chuck is mounted to my eccentric chuck. Now this I made. It's all Corian. It slides. It'll go an inch and a half uh, out, of, out of round down to perfectly round. Uh, it's got stop screws to adjust it. It's got a pivot to turn it around. This is a real good knockoff of an old eccentric chuck. And it took me an all one weekend to build it. The first one took me three hours to build the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. All right. Now, what we will now do is follow way back here on this end. I have got. Let's see if I can do this smoothly. I have got the rubber, and this is a rub er that rubs on a disc that's turning straight or no design. That rubber is turning. I'm not going to start the motor. I'm following that rubber with my, or that disc with my rubber. That's right here. Now it's going to turn perfectly straight, which means no design over here, okay? Now over here, the eccentric is now spinning this thing concentrically off of a center point to achieve this. So when I start the motor and start going in, I will make these cuts on the face of it. Now at one point I had a pencil or a, more, a scribe that would fit in there that I could show you, but still it made too much noise. And that's the problem with doing these demos or these tapes with this machine. Way too noisy. This will do it. I will set by driving in my slide vise to a point which I've set up that would be right off of it and I would check it by going in uh, step in your way here for a second you see where it's crossing it's completely off the round so I passed that point so I will now come out and watch where it crosses I don't know if you can follow this let me, stop. Now, let me see if I can explain what's going to happen here. I've changed my slide. I've driven it in and a little bit closer. And I'm watching where if this is a cutter. 
is going to cross on my piece. It's going to go up and out and only give me a very small curve in here. If it's too small, it'll probably break off this thousand year old cypress. So I drive out another tenth of an inch. Every turn on the wheel is a tenth of an inch on this slide. And it moves me in about a tenth of an inch. So if I pick that as a starting point, then I'll say, okay, that's, that's where my slide's gonna start from. I'm going to say zero is top here. I'm crossing at a point that I can live with. I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm going to leave a little bit of a shoulder down there, about like that, okay? I'm going to make my cut. I'm going to count how many winds I go in. I've got to go halfway or better in order to show the other side. If you come up short, you're just going to see a blank underneath there. You won't see through it. After I make that cut, I'm going to back out, set them on the cranks, roll out two and a half turns, which is 2.5 tenths of an inch, 25 hundredths of an inch, and I'm going to, that's not right, is it? Uh, and then I'm going to make my next cut to a set distance in. Now, I do have the attachments to put a stop on this to stop it at a point, but I can count. Yeah, I, I got really good at that a long time ago. So that's how I'm going to start my cuts and make my sets. Unfortunately, when I do this, I can't talk to you. So if you want to watch, watch. You notice that right now I can see how deep I'm going with the first cut. I'll know if I get to about here that I'll be halfway through. Or, well, I know I'll be more than halfway through. Should see the spline. That would be one, two, and a half turns in, I backed out four, and we go again. couple of things. The back and forth actions because I have a motor off of a Performax 1020 sander as my drive motor. I've got a variable speed reversible switch. Most guys with ornamentals don't have that option and it's about $120 to buy the parts and then you have to build the rake to make it work and wire it. And... Alright, but that otherwise when I'm on the outside of that elliptical cut. I'm doing a whole lot more air than I'm doing wood. And you talk about boring, but I, I, that's why I go back and forth. You save a little bit of time. It's not a time thing, but it's a concentration thing. This is a cooling fan out of a computer. Um, amazing how many of those things they throw away every day. I tore one out of a computer at the shop that they were throwing out. I put it on a pentagram for an old draftsman's light made a bracket that'll hold it and I put it here this is my rudimentary dust control it still gets on the old pouch but that's because it's flat surface and things gather on flat surfaces but it keeps it away from my face I also put a little plexiglass uh, guard on here to keep the air that 
the routers in line to blow down to blow the dust away would blow it up into my face so I did that also let me see what else I think that's pretty much it we made those cuts now I'm going to unchuck it out of the towel on take it over to my one way chuck it up again and this time it'll be running centered this time I can spin it centered and I can clean up all this now this is 1000 euro cypress and it's a little bit soft and brittle so I'm going to be really sweet to it but if you can see in there you can see the pattern that see see there some of that that's the pattern it is cut all the way through and it makes for a nice effect the finished product very much like the Hans Weislog detail but it's done in an ornamental let you play with your late Zilla or whatever and one more time the offer for a complete set of plans on how to build late Zilla the ornamental rig is twenty dollars on my website and that's a donation to Freedom Pens you have to pay me through PayPal I buy twenty dollars of parts for Freedom Pens or donate the money to Freedom Pens to help with shipping etc whatever the Sarge needs that's what we do we support the troops boys you know that so that is concentric on Lazilla you've seen how it did it on the other lathe and between the two you can come up with some really really nice stuff oh wait 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 back to the original this is the original and if it was just hanging on a wire with no movement it'd be pretty boring looking stuff but to do this little wire thing Oh, that's simple. I get to give you that tip. And that is not a spring. To make a coil spring is pretty simple. The rig is this. This is a piece of three quarter inch dowel. A little black mark you see right there is a one sixteenth hole drilled in that dowel. It's drilled on an angle or closer to an edge so to hold the wire in rather than let it pop out. This wire, this is a coil of wire I picked up at the hardware store it's not spring wire it's not special wire it's just steel wire now you see silver doesn't mean you have to stick with silver and oh you you can make this black with the marks a lot too now end of the wire uncoil it do not work from a coil I'd get my neighbor stubby to come down here and tell you why um, but you know he's in physical therapy stick the wire in the hole now I have to put my lathe on reverse because I drove my hole the wrong direction but if I was doing this the right way I drove my hole that way away from me so it would coil one way but this is what's going to happen my lathe is at its very slowest speed pull on the wire over, don't overlap it just get behind it like you're tying an armature or winding an armature put some tension on it so you pull it tight to that stick you want it good and tight you can get 20 30 wraps I like to get about a half an inch three quarters of an inch on it really simple to do now if you don't have a variable speed lathe you can do this with a cordless drill and a buddy helping you or your wife or you can have a friend just turn your headstock with the crank handle as you do this now you think you're far enough special tool pow now look at that can it get any simpler sure but I'd have to come over to your house and do it for you there you go a spring to hang it on yeah cool stuff huh